welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the Extra Mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now, your host, Jackson Mummy, owner of the Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. This episode should be released the day after Christmas, so I hope everybody had a wonderful Merry Christmas and a great uh, holiday season, right in the midst of it, of course, and uh, look forward to a great 2019 for everyone. But thanks for taking some time out of your holidays uh, to visit with us and uh, find out about all things bar exam related. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We're glad to have you here. We produce these uh, podcasts every week. We do them in a couple of different formats. We have a video version that you can watch by simply going to celebrationbarreview.com forward slash 230. That's the episode number for today. But just type in the episode number and you'll see them all there. And the show notes are right there as well. If you prefer to listen to your podcast, you can do that on Apple iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, a lot of places where podcasts are syndicated. And again, there are show notes there. And if you'd like to go back in our archives, you can go to celebrationbarreview.com. There is a podcast uh, link at the top of the page. Uh, Check that out. We've got all of our episodes going back all the way to the very first episodes. And oh my goodness, we've been doing this for years and years now. So I'm pretty amazed when we get up to episode 230. That's a lot of podcasting going on over the years. Well, in today's episode, I thought I would uh, continue doing some questions and answers. I started that last week in uh, episode 229, and today I thought I'd focus on the questions that I get around two particular tools, photo reading and mind mapping. And uh, if you're not familiar with those, stay with us. I'll explain a little bit about both of them. But they tend to be one of the subjects that I get probably the most questions about uh, from our audience and listeners. And so I thought it would be a good idea to take some of those questions and try and give you uh, some answers and some overview of all of that. Now, before we uh, jump into the questions and answers about photo reading, I do want to let all of you know that we will be holding a special free live training coming up this Thursday night, December 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern. The title of the training is Do Something Different, Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. We're going to take a look at what successful students have done to pass the bar following a four-step process that we're going to lay out. And we've got some terrific case studies. We've got some polls and opportunities to chat with you. And we'll do a live Q&A as well uh, to answer your questions at the end of the training. Now, as I said, this training is completely free, uh, but you do need to register in advance. And you can do that by going to our website. Uh, You'll see a a button right there at the top of the homepage, and you can uh, sign up there. Or by looking at the show notes uh, for the video or the audio, and you'll see the buttons there. Or you can simply go to celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar and register on that page. If Thursday the 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern is not convenient for you, we also offer a daily on-demand version of the same content, uh, and I'd encourage you to check that out uh, if that's more convenient. The only difference, of course, is that I don't do a Q&A at the end of all of the on-demand versions, but there is a spot right there in the webinar for you to send me your questions by email, and I promise I'll respond directly. So no matter how it uh, works out for you the most conveniently, um, I do encourage you to join us. If you'd like to find out what it is that you have to do differently in order to pass the bar. This is the training you want to be part of. We've had literally thousands of people go through this training over the many years that we've been doing it. Uh, It's extremely well received and I think it'll be well worth your time. Uh, We'd love to have you join us on Thursday the 27th. All right. Well, we're uh, we're obviously in the midst of the holidays, and I did want to let you know that over the years, uh, as we've gone into different holiday seasons, I have talked about studying over the holidays, and I'm going to put a link in the show notes, but I want to just let you know that all the way back in episode 44, um, I did an episode on studying over the holidays. It's still one of our more popular episodes, and we'll link to that if you're interested in some suggestions about how to study and not make everyone furious with you over this uh, holiday season. All right, well, I wanted to get into today's primary topic, which is photo reading and mind mapping. These are two of the tools that we teach at Celebration Bar Review that uh, over the last decade have become incredibly uh, central and important to our students. They've become a big reason why we've seen huge jumps in scores. 
If you've watched uh, any of the testimonial videos we've done, and I think we're up over 75 of those now uh, that we've put up on our website, uh, you will see a substantial number of those students reference their photo reading, their mind mapping, some of these tools uh, that we specifically uh, recommend as being a major cause of the success that they had in passing the bar. So I get a lot of questions from listeners to uh, of the podcast who are like, yeah, so what is that? And a good one is, uh, everyone's talking about photo reading. Uh, uh, could you please give me information on that? I'm not sure if I missed it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's just start with some basics about what photo reading is and isn't. I'm also going to put some links in the show notes uh, to other episodes in which we've talked about photo reading over the years. And uh, it's quite a few, actually. I was going back, it's as far back as episode 66 when we first explained photo reading. And then we talked about it uh, in, in another uh, probably four or five episodes over the years. So uh, there's a lot there and, and we'll reference all of that for you if you're interested. Interested. But what is photo reading? Well, it's a program that was developed by a third party, Learning Strategies Incorporated, out of uh, Minnesota, and a man by the name of uh, Dr. Paul Sheely. Paul is a uh, real leader in neurolinguistic programming, and his PhD is in the field of uh, learning and education, and uh, he's, he's really a remarkable man. About 25 years ago, Paul started working with the idea of how the brain functions and how we read. And the traditional concept of reading, as we all do it, is conscious reading. We read word by word, line by line. Uh, here in the West, we go left to right, but in some cultures, we go right to left. Um, the point is that we train ourselves, we teach ourselves to read in what is actually a fairly unnatural way. What Paul theorized was that there was a different form of learning that was going on behind the scenes, if you will, sort of in the background, that was a much faster uh, processing and took advantage of our non-conscious brains, the part that controls so many of the, uh, the human uh, anatomy and features, things like breathing and blinking and uh, swallowing. Uh, all of those uh, uh, abilities are run in the back of the brain, the non-conscious brain. And what Paul wanted to do was to see if we could uh, take the concept of reading and accelerate it, and accelerate the learning and understanding of the material. And so working together with others, he created what ultimately became known as the photo reading system. Now, I, I've said this to Paul, and I will say it here. I think it's a lousy name, because unfortunately what it makes people think of is it's speed reading, and it's not speed reading at all. Uh, photo reading is literally taking a mental image, a mental snapshot of each page at a very rapid rate. In fact, the uh, per page or per word rate for a photo reader can be as high as 25,000 words per minute. Now, the traditional uh, lawyer or doctor has been timed on technical materials at 110 words per minute. So you can compare 110 words a minute versus 25,000 words a minute. Something's obviously different. You can't speed read at 25,000 words a minute. But what you can do is take a mental image of each page going into the non-conscious brain, into the non-conscious processor. Photo reading is a course designed to help you learn how to do that, and more importantly, how to extract what you've put in to that non-conscious processor for better recall, better retention of material, better understanding, deeper understanding of material. So the background is that uh, about 10 years ago, um, I was looking for a way to help some of my uh, students who were beginning to really struggle with the exam. This was the start of the downward slide in pass rates across the country. And I was catching the first wave of those students coming out of the big box bar reviews who simply weren't succeeding with traditional study methods. And so I started casting about for a better way to teach people how to study for the exam. One of the things I came across was the photo reading home study course, and I decided to try it for myself, and I was skeptical about it. Um, it didn't seem plausible to me that you could read that quickly and retain any information at all. So I uh, b bought the course, uh, took it home, and studied using back then CDs and uh, you know some pretty crude materials. And uh, in a series of eight one-hour lectures, um, I learned the process, the technique of photo reading, and I decided to start applying it. And really, I will say, almost from the beginning, I was impressed and amazed at what was happening for my own reading. I was suddenly able to read not only huge 
tracks of material, but then have access and know the material at a deep level in a way that I couldn't before. Now, I want to be clear about this. I didn't know it in the conscious mind. I didn't have a photographic memory of what was going on. What I had was an understanding intuitively of what was happening so that if I were asked a question about it or asked to pinpoint a particular piece of information within the book or material, I could do so very quickly. And I didn't know why, I just knew that I could. I also knew that by having taken the system under my wing and starting to use it as I looked at the bar review materials, I was really stunned at how much it lined up with what a bar student had to do. There's obviously a ton of material that you need to read, and it's very detailed and very technical and very specific. There is no way that I'm aware of that you could memorize all of that work. No matter how many hours you put in or how many flashcards you made, no matter how many mnemonics you created, it just isn't going to happen. You know, there was a bar review course many years ago in New York where they made the students literally write, transcribe word for word their lectures because they were trying to get the student to know all of this material kinesthetically. Well, I think they have the right idea, but the wrong application. The better way to understand this material is kinesthetic, but it's not by writing it all down word for word. It's by reading it into the non-conscious and then activating it using a whole series of techniques. The great advantage, and the, I'm jumping ahead just a bit in the story, but the great thing that we brought to this whole process after 10 years of working with it was the idea of bringing mind mapping uh, into the preparation of highly technical material. And that's a really interesting development just in the last two or three years. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. But interestingly enough, what we began to see almost from the outset was that you could absorb huge amounts of information and have it at your fingertips when you needed it, whether you were taking a multiple choice test or you were doing an essay. And it was an extraordinary tool. So I was excited about it, but I was also a little leery of producing and selling that and talking to people out in the, the world. So I very quietly went to a few of the students that were having the most difficulty in, in passing the bar. And I asked them if they'd be willing to try this. Um, and I guess my theory was that they had nothing to lose, so why not? And I think that was their approach as well. You know, it sounded crazy and ridiculous, but okay, I'll try it. Well, almost right out of the gate, we started seeing success. Scores started jumping up. Uh, results were changing dramatically. We had people passing bar exams who had taken multiple times without any hope of success previously. And they began talking about photo reading. And as we started doing some interviews with them and talking to them and having them share their, their uh, responses and thoughts with our current students, they kept bringing up photo reading. And then my current students would say, well, what is photo reading? What's that all about? Because I wasn't offering it publicly. So over time, uh, it sort of acquired a life of its own, a momentum of its own, and we began to find ourselves with more and more students who wanted to do photo reading. Well, that inspired me to go ahead and become certified as a photo reading trainer with Learning Strategies. I had the privilege and continue to work with uh, their top trainer nationally, Millicent St. Clair. I've taught live with her at a couple of our boot camps. Uh, I've been at sessions with her. And of course, I've worked with Paul Sheely. And um, it's been an extraordinary opportunity for me to really take a very deep dive in this technology and theory and working with it and then bringing those results back to the folks at Learning Strategies and saying, what do you think? And the iterative process has really led us into this development of mind mapping as a capstone to the whole process of photo reading and activating what you're doing. Now, that is a very long wordy answer to a very simple question. Photo reading is a system that allows you to read an outline for the bar review in about 15 minutes. That means you can read it many, many times between now and the bar exam date. In fact, students often tell me they read 50 to 100 times or more each outline in the course. By photo reading, uh, what you're doing then is taking that material and then starting to activate it in smaller sections or chunks through mind mapping. And the idea here is to take what you've read and to convert it to some tangible, active, conscious form of learning. So when a student signs up for photo reading in our course, what we do is give them access to uh, eight one-hour audio lectures from Paul Sheely about the technique of photo reading. And they do those while they're studying for the bar. So an hour of their day is photo reading, and then they've got another couple hours a day of bar study. You don't have to do the photo reading before you can get into bar study. 
but most of our students start photo reading a bar outline after about three or four photo reading lessons. So it doesn't take very long to learn it. It's literally flipping pages. I mean, that's the, the most basic uh, explanation of it. And when that process starts to happen, then that's when the magic starts to occur. We start to see people improving their multiple choice performance and their uh, quality of knowledge of the law in essays. We see people getting ready to write performance tests with 20 minutes of preparation instead of 40 or 45. It is truly remarkable. So, in a nutshell, that's what photo reading has become. Today, about 65-70% of our students in Celebration Bar Review use photo reading. I would say an equal percentage, although not always the same people, are using mind mapping. So what's a mind map? A mind map is nothing other than a visual representation of your written material, or if you've been listening to a lecture, uh, it's a visual representation of that lecture material. It literally looks like a tree with a uh, stump in the middle and then branches extending outward uh, from the, the, uh, the, the center or the core. Um, mind mapping can be done by hand. You could draw your own mind maps. Many of our students do that. Or it can be created on a computer program. We love a program called MindMeister, M-I-N-D-M-E-I-S-T-E-R.com, and we'll link to that in our show notes as well. It's a great way to, com uh, to produce computerized mind maps and then grow them. Mind mapping is simply the process that lets you take what you've either read or heard and now begin to put it into smaller chunks so that you can see the visual representation using color and images, uh, using uh, uh, different lines, shapes, and sizes, uh, highlighting different things, so that the non-conscious brain, uh, which is 90% of our capacity, uh, this speaks to that part of the brain very clearly. And it's a great way to take what you've photo read and then produce something that you now can consciously read out loud, read to others, look at, review, and it replaces the traditional form of note taking that we would call linear note taking, which is simply working from the top down, taking a series of notes on your computer or your laptop or maybe by hand. It's a much better way of note taking because you're much more immersed in the material. And we suggest creating a series of nested mind maps in which you start with big topics and then work your way down uh, to smaller and smaller subtopics uh, within the, the nest. Or if, if you think of a Russian nested doll, for example, that's a pretty good analogy. So mind mapping is the preferred method of note taking. And we've seen that as students mind map, their performance with photo reading and their performance on the bar exam, which is our ultimate point has gone way, way up. So why are we doing well when other people are doing worse? Well, I think photo reading and mind mapping are two of the big uh, reasons. So there you go. That's a brief uh, uh, discussion. Brief, my God, 15 minutes, right? But there, there is the discussion of photo reading. And as I said, we'll link in the show notes to some other episodes in which we've talked about photo reading in even more detail. All right, so let's get to some questions then from students. Um, a student wrote and said, I'm registered to sit for the February uh, bar exam, and I realize it's pretty late in the game to be considering signing up for photo reading, and I'm kind of afraid to put anything else on my plate. I'm apprehensive about adding extra work, but um, my plan was to, to add photo reading after the bar exam. Should I start now? <laughs> I'm being urged to go ahead and do it now, and if so, how do I do that? Um, what's the process? Well, the, the answer is you have plenty of time. If you're uh, watching or listening to this podcast uh, right after the holidays or right after Christmas and you're planning on taking the February exam, uh, you still have time to add photo reading uh, to your course and be successful. Generally speaking, as I said, photo reading takes about eight hours to learn the entire system uh, and really not very much more time than that to implement it into your studies. So I think you've got plenty of time to do that. I know that photo reading is becoming increasingly popular uh, generally around the country and literally around the world. And while it would be great to add it on after the bar exam and use it for your business reading and your pleasure reading, uh, I do all of those things. Uh, it's uh, certainly more effective for the bar exam and that would be our recommendation is to add it. Now, if you're taking the July 2019 exam, you absolutely should add photo reading now and begin that study and process. I also have to say, that if you are adding photo reading to a big box bar review, um, the folks at Learning Strategies will be glad to help you, but it's not part of what we can do. We obviously work with it with our students and we have integrated it into our course um, and we've made it a part of our study guide and our process and we do some webinars and other material to support it. So 
If you're thinking that photo reading is interesting to you, I would also consider uh, whether or not you want to take uh, a bar review course that integrates photo reading or one that, that is nothing to do with it and you're just using it as an add-on. Can it be effective in that setting? Yeah, sure it can. Uh, and I hear from people all the time that have done that. Uh, but I think you're better off if you're using a course like ours where everything is consistent and integrated. So uh, how should you add it? Uh, if you're in our course, there's an order page uh, for photo, photo reading. You can simply sign up there and we'll get you started with it right away. Okay, and if you're not in our course, you can go to learningstrategies.com and we'll put that link in the show notes as well. And you can order the course from them. All right, now uh, I briefly mentioned that I did some training live with Millicent St. Clair. This was part of what we called our photo reading boot camps, and we've done three of them now uh, in various configurations. Uh, Millicent's not always with me. We just finished up a, a boot camp uh, where I was assisted by uh, our senior editor, Megan Saya, and our director of group coaching, uh, Kelly Perkins. Um, and uh, so we got this question, are there plans for doing uh, any more photo reading workshops uh, in the upcoming year in 2019? The answer is yes, we expect to do one in late May, early June. We'll do it here in Florida in celebration right outside of Orlando. Uh, we'll be providing details about that. You can check out uh, upcoming information or past information as well at celebrationbarreview.com slash bootcamp. We'll let you know as soon as that uh, becomes available. Um, we think the live training is really valuable. It's a two and a half day session. We teach you how to photo read. We teach you how to apply it to uh, MBE questions, essay writing, performance tests. We show you how to mind map. It's a great experience and uh, we have uh, received wonderful feedback uh, from students that have been through boot camp and then gone on to pass the bar and uh, we hope that you would be one of those. All right, another question we get about photo reading is uh, whether or not uh, you learn photo reading from a digital download or is there a hard copy? And the answer is it's a digital download, uh, so anyone can study photo reading from anywhere in the world. Uh, you don't need to, to have hard copy. Now, a related question to this is, can you photo read on a digital uh, electronic device or do you have to have books in front of you? And the answer is you can do it digitally. I do all of my photo reading today on a digital basis. Uh, I read right from my laptop or my pet tablet, and I photo read that way. Um, the reason that you only see one bookshelf behind me is I have literally gotten rid of thousands and thousands of hard copy books because I don't read that way anymore. I read everything uh, digitally and I photo read it. So it's a terrific tool and you can learn it all uh, in home study. All right, the next question that we've got uh, has to do with mind mapping specifically. Um, a student wrote, I usually start my mind mapping with a general big picture of the whole subject, but then I end up adding lots of details in each subtopic. Is that normal? Yeah, it is normal. What happens is you start with a large topic and then you create a new mind map, a completely different uh, file or piece of paper, and you take those uh, subtopics from the first page and now each one of those becomes moves into the center as its own mind map. And then you work down in detail. So I like the idea of nesting and moving into more detail. Student went on to say, do I need to keep it simple with a few words or should I be writing paragraphs? And the answer here is a few words is preferable always. In fact, the best way to think about mind maps is like picture books. You want just a few words, you want some pictures, you want some color, you want some relationships so that you can see where things fit in together. If all you're doing is transferring the uh, text word for word verbatim into another format, you're really not getting much. It's as I said before, the idea of transcribing. That's not what we want to do. The best way to know the material is to paraphrase it. So what you photo read, now you go back and you use some of the techniques that you will learn in photo reading. Um, I'm gonna use some names and they sound a little weird, but we're talking about things like rapid reading or super dip and skim or rhythmic perusal. These are all active forms of reading that might more uh, commonly uh, be comparable to speed reading, uh, but, but with a different purpose, but not the entire outline, only a piece of it to get the information you need to put into the mind map. So if you will, think of photo reading as the broad general piece, and then we start to narrow it down with uh, rapid reading, and then we go to the mind map, which is the more detailed piece at the end. Um, paragraphing though, you don't want to do that in a mind map. Uh, don't make your mind maps too long. Uh, make your mind maps just a few words. And in the process of breaking down a concept to just a few words or a phrase, you're really forcing yourself to understand the material, to be able to own it and know it. 
And the key here is that once you've done that in preparation, when you get to a bar essay, for example, now you have the phrase and the words, uh, and they will come to you. Uh, you won't know why they've come to you. You did not sit down to consciously memorize them. You'll simply know them. And uh, it's quite an experience when it starts to happen. The same thing is true in a multi-state question. You'll simply know what the answer is. You won't have to sit there and think about it. It will be clear to you. In fact, we've had students in interviews say, you know, I could see the answer coming up in a different color, literally in my, my mind's eye as I was reading through the problem. This is a fairly common phenomenon and it makes a huge difference. And that's why we can see students with 10, 20, 30 point jumps on the MBE. That in uh, my 30 years was never possible until we got into photo reading and mind mapping. All right, another mind mapping question. I use mind mapping for a general picture of the subject, but I also know it could be used to mind map questions if I get a question wrong. That's, uh, that's a great idea. One of the things that we suggest is that if you do a multiple choice question, that you go and read the answer explanations. In our course, we provide explanations for every uh, question. And of course, these are all licensed questions in our course. Well, what do you do with that after you've looked at the explanation? Many of you uh, make flashcards or you keep journals or you take notes and you may or may not ever go back to those notes again. Well, in our suggestion, what you do is you go, the, go to those explanations and now you create a mind map uh, for that topic so, or you find where that topic fits into your existing mind map and you take the core of the explanation, the heart of the, the answer, uh, and you put that into the mind map. And um, I think it is a, uh, a great way to be able to get the value out of doing practice questions, because now you're really being able to see where it fits into the broader taxonomy of a subject, how it fits into the overall understanding of the subject, um, and I think it makes a big difference. This student said, right now, if I get a question wrong, I write down the explanation, but I don't mind map it. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that you get more effectiveness when you mind map the answer explanation. And they, they then went on to say, do you map it into the general map of that subject? No, you probably are mapping an answer explanation at a deeper level of the mind map. That is, rather than the table of contents level, now you're probably looking at something more specifically. So if I'm doing torts negligence, uh, maybe this particular problem turned on uh, proximate cause. So I'm looking at the negligence mind map, I'm looking at the elements of negligence, and maybe I'm even in a more specific part of that with proximate cause, and now I create a new branch uh, just with this particular permutation. So it's a way to keep your mind maps growing and developing. We often say to our students that mind maps are dynamic, not static. They're not something you create and then paste up on the wall and leave them. They're actually something that continue to grow and develop as you go through your studies right up until the very end. And in fact, we even recommend to our students that they record out loud reading their mind maps and then save those recordings and play them back uh, as a way of hearing in their own voice a discussion of the material. So it's a very, very effective study. Now, one question that comes up is, well, that obviously sounds like it takes a lot of time. Where am I going to find that time? Remember, most people will need, on average, about 8 to 10 hours to read one subject in a bar review outline. I mean, think about your own studies, whether you're in our course or somewhere else. That's probably pretty typical, that 8 to 10 hours. Our students who are photo reading read that same material in 15 minutes. So <laughs> you got a lot of time there that you could use that you were reading that you could now mind map. You won't need eight to 10 hours of mind mapping, trust me, but it's still a net time saver when you photo read and you can keep going back and photo reading and photo reading and photo reading. All right, another question. Um, I, I know you prefer that students not take notes during lectures, uh, but with a difficult subject, uh, like an MBE subject like property, what do you recommend? Should I listen to the lecture without taking any notes or do something different? Our answer is you should probably keep your mind map in front of you. And as you're listening to the lecture, just as you would if you were in a classroom setting, add to your mind map. If you hear something that's interesting or makes sense to you, add it to the mind map. Don't try to just take a literal sense of notes. I think for most people, note taking in class has really become an exercise in futility. You do it, <clears throat> you, you finish it, you close it up and you never look at it again. And it really was only there to keep you from falling asleep or losing your mind during the lecture. So I think it's much more effective to actively be engaged in the material. And of course, in a home study course, you can always turn off the lecture. <clears throat> 
and go right in and uh, uh, you know add to your mind map and then start the lecture again. So uh, lots of ways to, to take your notes, but I think that's a good way to do it is to mind map uh, through that. All right, another question I get a lot, certainly from podcast listeners, is enrolling in photo reading a necessity to be successful uh, in the, the Celebration Bar Review course? The answer is no, it's not a necessity, but it's a really good tool. And the analogy I use is this. If you were trying to put a, uh, a, a screw into the wall and you had an old rusty screwdriver and it was the wrong size for the screw and it was a really tough wall and I saw you standing there grunting and groaning and trying to get it to work and it just wasn't working. And I said, hey, by the way, I've got a power drill right here with the right size drill bit or head bit. Would you like to use that instead? And you said, no, I like this idea of taking this old rusty screwdriver and banging it against the wall and hoping it works. Yeah, that's pretty much what bar students tend to do, isn't it? And so here is a tool that is extraordinarily effective. Now, if you don't want to use the tool, you don't have to, whether you're in our course or somewhere else. Uh, but frankly, um, if there's just even a little bit of curiosity in your brain about this, then I think you ought to check it out. It's not all that expensive to learn uh, to get the photo reading course. Um, we offer the course for uh, $295, which is less expensive than learning strategies. And we offer a bunch of extras in the way of webinars and special training. So I think it's well worth it. Should, do you have to have it to be successful? No. Uh, but again, it's a pretty good tool. All right. Um, another question that we got um, was from someone who said, I am a photo reader and I have experienced mind mapping, uh, but I've not really appreciated the benefit of doing so. And I not, don't know if I'm mind mapping and photo reading correctly or not. Should I mind map after reading and having watched the lectures? And the answer is yes. After every time you uh, connect with the material, I think it's good to do a mind map or to build on your mind map. And then they said, do I mind map the entire subject area? Well, no, it's a dynamic mind map. It's growing and expanding. So you don't have to start all over again. You're simply adding to it the pieces that you don't have. And then they said, when mind mapping, do I look at the subject matter and build the map from what I've extracted from my mind, or do I use the outline to build the mind map? Well, really what you do is you start with the outline, you create the mind map, and then you begin to activate through rapid reading, super dip and skim, rhythmic perusal, all techniques that we teach you in photo reading for a particular body of material. So it's really a combination. It's what you photo read, activating that, and what you're looking at in the outline. But I think the real question is, do you mind map with a book open or closed? You do it with a book open. You're literally parsing the book, the outline, uh, to create the mind map. So uh, that's the best way to do it. I get a lot of questions about whether or not there's technical proficiency in photo reading. Now, I'm a good photo reader. I can read 25,000 words a minute. I can retain a lot of information. I can extract a lot of it. But the truth is, I get just about as much out of my photo reading today as when I first started. And I, I don't think it's the technical proficiency that makes much difference. It's really the willingness to just absorb it, relax, let the material come into my brain, and then use it when I need it. And that is the essence of photo reading. Most of the rest of it just complicates matters in some respects. And that's one of the reasons that we can teach photo reading in just a few hours at our boot camp is that it doesn't have to be complicated. It's actually a pretty intuitive way to learn. And if you think about how children learn, it's very much in this context of photo reading. It's not the way that we force them to do word for word, line for line. By the way, an interesting uh, piece of information I got from Paul uh, the other day is that in Japan, they have now instituted photo reading in the elementary school curriculum across the country. It is part of the mandatory curriculum. So Japanese children in first grade are learning to photo read. So there you go. All right, another photo reading question. Um, I think I'm moving at the right pace to complete my studies, but I don't have enough time to regularly review my mind maps. Um, I'm asking about this because when I'm able to review the mind maps, they're very helpful for clarifying how major topics and subtopics are interconnected. That's right. So I'd like to review them often, but my mind maps keep growing, unlike when I took linear notes and I just did them and put them away. So will I have time to review them uh, be between now and the exam? And the answer is yes. It only takes typically about 15 to 20 minutes to 
literally read a mind map. Depending on the, the size of the mind map, it could be much less than that. That's why I suggest that you record your reading of the mind map and then just put it on a, a repeating track on your smartphone. Put the smartphone under your bed when you go to sleep at night at the very lowest volume. Your non-conscious brain can hear all of that, uh, even if you can't consciously perceive the sound, uh, and let it play for a while uh, as you drift off to sleep. And that will be, uh, I think, a very effective way uh, for you to get through it. But even if you did it consciously, just spending that 15 or 20 minutes is well spent time going back over the mind map. So yeah, I think you should go over it all the time. I think it's a great way of going back. And if you're in our course, we're going giving you uh, specific feedback and direction on how to do that. All right, a couple of last questions and then we'll wrap up. Um, one of the questions that I get sometimes is once a subject has been photo read and mind mapped, should it be re-photo read again? If so, how often? The answer is yes, you should photo read every time you're doing practice questions in that topic. Uh, you should photo read before you do essays in that topic. You should photo read any and often as you need to. At the end of your studies, many of our students will photo read all of their outlines, so their state and multi-state outlines. They'll do one night all multi-state outlines. The next night, they'll photo read all of their non-multi-state uh, subjects. And they'll do that uh, each night over the last 10 days before the bar exam. Why? Because it's just adding to what they already know. That would be impossible for anybody in a traditional reading structure to do. So it's a, a great way to do that. Another question was, how often should we review mind maps uh, since we're always adding new subjects? I think you go back to prior mind maps anytime you're doing questions. Uh, in our course, we're rolling back to old subjects or old previous subjects, so there's a built-in structure. But if you're studying on your own, I would simply look at topics that you feel is less comfortable with and then look at your mind maps there and review those that way. And then the last question today is um, having to do with the time it takes to build a mind map. Um, and the, the student says, the process is taking me a long time to do, um, and what's a reasonable amount of time you should invest in building a mind map? I think the answer to that will depend on how uh, extensive the subject is, but in general, you can create a broad topic mind map in about 15 minutes. Uh, then as you start to delve deeper, um, I think you're going to find that you're probably looking at 15 to 30 minutes uh, for each broad topic that you're working on, and depending on how much detail you want to add to that. The, the reality is that very few people will do an entire subject start to finish from the broadest down to the most detailed part in one sitting. That's not very practical. Instead, you do it in increments and in pieces. Um, and I think that for most people, uh, an hour or two a day of mind mapping in place of traditional reading is probably a pretty good uh, use of time. So the combination of photo reading and mind mapping is a net time saver. Uh, we've seen that over and over again for our students, and uh, we would encourage you to, to take and check all that out. Now, if you're in our course and you're a photo reader, uh, we've already given you access to some materials about photo reading uh, in addition to the learning strategies materials. And we have a special webinar on mind mapping and photo reading uh, that we did uh, from our boot camp. So there's lots of materials there to check out and we'd encourage all of you in our course to do that. If you're not yet in our course and you're interested in knowing more, uh, I encourage you to check out these other links that we'll put in the uh, show notes uh, or to contact us. We'd be glad to talk with you about it. We think it's a game changer in fact, we know it's a game changer, and we really want to encourage you uh, to check that out for your own studies, particularly if you're a bar repeater uh, and you've had difficulty. One other question that sometimes comes up from folks is they'll say, I have a physical disability, or I have a, uh, an accommodation for ADHD or dyslexia, or I have a vision problem in one of my eyes, or I'm not a, a, an English speaking, that's not my first language, can I still use photo reading? And the answer in all of those circumstances is yes. We've been successful with students for whom English was not their first language and were photo readers. Uh, we just did an episode with uh, Evelyn Jimenez Franco, uh, who photo read, uh, she was an attorney from Puerto Rico, uh, and she was very successful using that. And she, that's one of many examples. Um, we've had success with people with vision problems. Uh, Glenn Winter that we interviewed just recently on the podcast passed the California bar, took him more than 20 tries. Photo reading made the difference for him and he was uh, nearly blind in one eye. Um, we've had all sorts of students over the years with ADHD and dyslexia who've used photo reading. Doesn't seem to make much of a difference. It really tends to bypass the conscious brain processing uh, and that's what makes it so successful. So. Something to check out, something to think about. Hope that you'll uh, consider that as you uh, consider your studies. 
All right, well, I hope this has been helpful for you. Just want to give you one final reminder that December 27th, uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m., we're going to be doing free live training. Uh, do something different. Make the next bar exam your last bar exam. And we're going to be talking to students uh, who did some different things, including photo reading and mind mapping. Uh, but we're going to show you step by step what we think it takes to pass the bar. So I hope you'll check that out. You can sign up at celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar. Look forward to seeing you on that free training. Well, I hope everybody has a wonderful uh, holiday week. Uh, we'll be back right after New Year's uh, doing a, a recap of uh, 2018. Wow, what a year. And uh, looking forward to the February 2019 exams. So I hope everybody has a, a great and safe New Year's, and we'll see you again along the extra mile. Thanks for being with us today, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Extra Mile Podcast for Bar Exam Takers at www.celebrationbarreview.com.